Now let's have a look at where we are. So our prediction step was as follows. Our mu was computed by chi and our sigma prediction was computed by chi sigma chi transpose plus our system noise r. And so we have set up this equation and we also computed chi which was the derivative with respect to the state. So we know how to do this and this and this is the previous sigma. So we're done with that. What remains is this. Now this is a 3 times 3 matrix which results from the noise of our control. And so similar to here we compute our RT from the noise in our control given by the covariance matrix of our control multiplied from the left and right by a matrix V where V is the derivative of G with respect to the control. So see the analogy between this and that where this construct transports the variance of the old state to the variance of the new state and this construct transports the variance of the control to the new state. And in order to write that out, we will have RT is VT times the variance of the left control, the variance of the right control times the transpose of V. So those variances capture the inexactness of our movement of the left and right track of the robot, assuming that there is no correlation between the two. So if you look at the dimensions, this is 3 times 3. Now this, as we see, is 2 times 2. So this must be 3 times 2. And this is the transposed matrix, so it's 2 times 3. And so indeed this V matrix looks like this. So it is indeed 3 times 2, the first column being the partial derivatives with respect to L, the second being with respect to R. Now let's compute those derivatives. So our function g, just g1, g2, g3, is x, y, theta plus those terms. And now we have to compute the partial derivative of g1 with respect to L. Now there is no L in those equations because it is hidden in R. So R was L divided by alpha and alpha was R minus L divided by W. So we see that R equals LW divided by R minus L. And so the term R plus W half, this is LW divided by R minus L plus W half, which is the same as W half times R plus L divided by R minus L. So let's go on here. We have to compute the partial derivative with respect to L of the first component, which is X plus this term here, which we just computed, times the sine of theta prime, where we will just set theta prime is theta plus alpha, minus the sine of theta. And so the derivative of x with respect to L is zero. Whereas here, we have the L in this term, and we also have the L in the alpha hidden here. So we have to apply the product rule. So the derivative of the first factor is 1 divided by the denominator squared times r minus l plus r plus l times this part unmodified plus the first part unmodified times the derivative of the second part which is the cosine times the derivative of theta prime with respect to l. So this is the derivative of alpha with respect to l which is minus 1 divided by w. So overall we obtain wr divided by r minus l squared times the sine of theta prime minus sine of theta minus, now this comes from here, r plus l divided by 2 r minus l times the cosine of theta prime. So this is our partial derivative of the first component of g with respect to l. Now and we will have to do six of those. Let me just write down all those for you. So this is what we just computed. And for the second component we have, for the third component, this is quite simple, minus 1 divided by the width. Now the same for the derivatives with respect to r. So we get a minus here and a plus here. And finally, the derivative of the third component with respect to r is 1 divided by the width. And so remember this is for r not equal to l and the theta prime which is used here is theta plus alpha. Now unfortunately we'll have to do all this for the case r equals l as well. And so for every component we will have to find out what happens if alpha goes to zero and so theta prime goes to theta. So let me just give you those equations. So in the case r equals l we will have to use this set of equations where the partial derivative of the third component of g with respect to l and r is the same as on the previous slide. So now let's program this. 
So I prepared this Slam7C control derivative question file for you. And so essentially your task is the same as in the previous case, only that the derivative of g you have to take is now with respect to control, meaning to L and R, and not with respect to the state. And so this is the function you'll have to fill out. Again, there's two cases for R not equal to L and for R equal to L, and you'll have to return a matrix, which is three rows times two columns. And down here in the main function, everything is set up as in the previous case. This time the numeric differentiation is with respect to L and R, and it will compare this to your analytic solution and it will print out the difference. So now please program this.